Yeah. Well, good morning. My name is Melissa and I am the host for this college session. So please be sure you're in the correct meeting. This is for the Carnegie Mellon University School of Art. Um, so I've muted everybody, but feel free to unmute when we have time for questions. I'd like to thank um, Mark and Clayton for being here with us today. We're excited to hear more about um, the opportunities that you have for our community. So without further ado. Hmm. Good morning. Uh, thank you everyone for, for attending. My name is Mark Cato. I'm an undergraduate advisor in the School of Art, and it's a, a pleasure to be here with you today and share a bit about our program. Oh, you're muted, Clayton. Um, I'm Clayton Merrill. I am a professor in the School of Art, and uh, I teach painting, drawing, as well as some uh, very non-traditional studio classes as well. So I'm happy to be here. Good to meet you all. Go ahead, Mark. So um, in terms of who we are and where we are, Carnegie Mellon is located in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the southwest corner of the state. So really a quick uh, trip to DC, New York and elsewhere. In terms of our program, we have 22 tenure and tenure track faculty within the school, uh, 200 undergraduate students as well as 18 MFA candidates. So we're a small program within a much broader university context. Our student to faculty ratio is nine to one. So you get to develop really intimate relationships with faculty and peers in the program alike. Uh, we're situated within a top 25 research-based university. So you get to be a part of this much larger context that you can use to inform your practice. As we said, we're located in Pittsburgh. And I'll turn the next slides over to Clayton. All right, thanks, Mark. Um, one thing to note about CMU that's a little bit different from some other art schools in particular is that when you apply to CMU, you do apply specifically to the School of Art um, or to whatever other program you're interested in. Um, and so you have to, it's not like a liberal arts program where you apply to the university at large, you apply to the School of Art, but you don't have to um, apply uh, within a particular concentration right off the bat, the way that you did in some schools. So for instance, when you first start off at CMU, your first year, um, we kind of force everybody to take a little bit of everything. We think it's great for all the students to, to have a taste of all the things they've never tried before. So your first year will cover all this territory. And then after that, you'll begin to concentrate in one of these four concentrations. So if we wanna go through these concentrations real quick, um, the first is kind of broadly speaking, two-dimensional art making. Um, this is the area that I mostly teach in that would cover drawing, painting, print media, photography, graphic novel, um, color theory, all of those kinds of things. The next category um, is broadly speaking, the, all the 3D stuff. Um, we have great uh, sculpture fabrication facilities and so students can, um, can work in all kinds of uh, 3D media, including ceramics, woodworking, metalworking, physical computing, um, digital fabrication, and all kinds of things, combinations and installations based on all those things as well. The next category, is uh, electronic and time-based media. Some schools call this their 4D concentration. Um, basically everything that happens across time. This would cover um, practices such as um, animation, game design, uh, video uh, production and editing, uh, computational and interactive art, bio art, um, all kinds of interactive game art, those sorts of things. Um, and then finally, our fourth concentration is a little bit unusual. You don't see this at every school. It was the first program of its kind in the country. Um, and it is called contextual practice. And basically, this is the, the mode of art making that would cover things like uh, street art or participatory art or interactive social media art projects or public installations, things like that. So basically, art that relies on context for its very existence, okay? And in terms of the facilities to, to support all of these classes, we have over five, sorry, 50,000 square feet of fabrication facilities, as Clayton mentioned, really amazing facilities in our 2D area. So dedicated drawing and, and painting studios uh, within Doherty Hall, that's where we have a lot of our larger fabrication studios, such as our wood shop space for large scale metal work, as well as small metals, our clay studio, and just general fabrication spaces. And you can see that we have both uh, laser cutters, uh, 3D printers, and uh, CNC routing along with traditional fabrication facilities. So we're a program that really engages a lot of new technologies as well as embracing tradition. 
and students will have access to their class spaces 24 hours a day, seven days a week under normal circumstances, a little restricted during the pandemic. Uh, but for juniors and seniors, they get individual workspace. And so this is 24 hour access, uh, seven days a week. And uh, so there are spaces that work very well for students who are doing 2D work, more larger, more open studios for more collaborative practice, as well as dedicated studios for those students who are doing more sculpture work. So a bit of space tailored to each sort of student. And uh, so next we'll talk a bit about which students thrive here at Colony Mellon. Yeah, um, essentially, I, we're not looking for any one particular type of student when we're admitting students. Um, at CMU, I th I'm always pleased to see when we have a big show that there's no such thing as a house style here. People aren't doing work that looks the same. Every single student is doing something totally unique and is following their own path. And so we're just looking for students who are deeply curious and creative. And um, the kind of student who is interested in CMU tends to be the kind of student who wants a really intense art education like an art art school kind of experience but also wants to be able to take advantage of all that the university has to offer so if you're really really into making art and you love what you do um, and you want to um, access other kinds of um, opportunities and other kinds of um, academics that are available at a university like cmu this is the kind of place for you um, it is a little bit like a conservatory atmosphere. Um, you get into the art studios and you wouldn't know that it isn't an art school, um, but then you step out of the art school and you're in a completely different environment as well. You're in the university. And because of our university context, it allows for a lot of interdisciplinary opportunities. So in addition to our Bachelor of Fine Arts students, which are the majority within the School of Art, about three quarters of our population, we also have this grouping of three interdisciplinary degree programs to combine study within the School of Art with disciplines in our teacher colleges, which is humanities and social sciences, so art and psychology, or art and decision science, or creative writing, uh, or with our Mellon College of Science, so you can combine art and biologic sciences, or mathematical sciences, or computer science and arts is, is another very popular pairing. Uh, but for students who don't want more of a hybrid degree, we also have a lot of students who earn minors. One that's very popular is within our ID8 or Integrated Design Arts and Technology Network. And ID8 has minors uh, that we teach into quite a bit, including in animation and special effects, game design, as well as in sonic arts. Uh, there's a new one that deals with, with uh, electronic fabrics and uh, things such as that. So uh, we see cross-disciplinary enrollment and students really working in interdisciplinary teams to bring projects to fruition. And we also have a unique research center within the College of Fine Arts, the Frank Ratchet Studio for Creative Inquiry, which really supports atypical and interdisciplinary projects. And so this amazing research hub within the university. And in terms of student projects, a great way to see more student work, and we can uh, link to some of this within the chat, would be visiting the School of Arts site and looking at our uh, gallery of, of exhibitions. But students are doing everything from computational landscape paintings through amazing cataloging and, and work with the Teeny Harris Collection in collaboration with our Carnegie Museum of Art just down the road from CMU, as well as site-specific installations and, and the Children's Museum uh, or digital works that have been a part of permanent collections. So we want students to be producing, we want students to be regularly exhibiting their work. And as Clayton said, there's a broad uh, swath of, of artistic practice within the school. We're really pushing your unique practice as you progress. All right, um, we are just about out of time, so I'm going to jump across these next two slides very quickly, Mark. Um, just to note that, um, just to note that some of our students uh, really do go into um, art careers, as you would imagine that, like primarily, if you want to jump to the next slide, Mark, um, primarily producing and exhibiting work. So um, these are all students who basically that's that's their thing. They're they're creating, um, you know, really world-class art and exhibiting in world-class venues. Um, and the next slide, um, another kind of 50% of our students end up really going into creative industries, um, kind of broadly described. So people who are going into uh, game design and animation and um, even, uh, you know, data visualization such as uh, Svetha Kanan 
Khan, who uh, just got a, uh, she's a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize for her data visualization uh, work at the LA Times right now. You know, so basically really quite broad what our students do after graduation. These are a few of our very famous alumni in case you're curious about who else uh, went to CMU um, before you. And uh, that's, that's probably where we ought to wrap it up, Mark. One more slide maybe, huh? Yeah. And so in terms of our portfolio recommendations, as you can see, it's, it's really, uh, I think Clayton can speak more to it than I can, but really looking at your individual abilities, your creative thinking skills, and what is really unique to your practice rather than assignment-driven work. And we don't have a formulaic conception of what you should be showing us. We want to really see what you feel is, is your strongest work and really representative of you as an artist. And, and we like to see a broad variety of portfolios. In the yeah, that's a that's a really good description, Mark. Um, and I think we ought to use our last moments to see if anybody has a question. Yeah. You guys, you can feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like, or you can also put your question in the chat. I think it's a small enough group. But yeah, I was super impressed. Thank you guys so much for sharing a little bit of your program. And I didn't know that Andy Warhol went there too. That's kind of interesting. But the programs are really dynamic. I really love even how they're like um, sort of Funced and connected. So I think we have a, a question from Bailey. Is financial aid available? Yes, uh, financial aid is available. Um, it's primarily need-based. There are a few, but very few kind of talent-based scholarships, but primarily it's need-based um, combination of, of grant and loan to try to meet all demonstrated student need. Maybe I have a question. So for uh, the portfolio, you mentioned 15 to 20 pieces. Um, can they include their sketchbook along with that too? Or is it like primarily finished pieces or working pieces? We, we love to see sketchbooks. I think often, um, you know, people put things in their sketchbooks that they're a little embarrassed to put into their real work. And, you know, we, we love to see the raw stuff. You know, we, we basically want any, any way of getting to know who you are as an artist. Um, and if that is happening in your sketchbook, that's great. Awesome. We have time for maybe a quick question. Anybody? Okay. Thank you so much, Martin, Clay, uh, Mark and Clayton. We really appreciate your time and for visiting us here in El Paso. And hopefully next year you can actually come and visit us. That would be amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Be well, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so Take much. Care. Enjoy your day. Uh -huh.